Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we are at the site of one of our lost five inch gun mounts because a very, very surprisingly common question I get asked is what happened to the five inch guns that were removed from Iowa class battleships? Uh, th this question surprises me because I've never thought about it. Like the, the guns needed to go, so they got rid of them. Like, I don't know, they were already old and nearing obsolescence in 1982. Nobody ever asks what happened to the five inch guns that were removed from Frammed, Fletcher, or Gearing, or Sumner class destroyers. But okay, so what happened to these guns? Short answer, we don't know. I'm not even sure where uh, to look for documentation on that. Uh, one place that I've partially looked is uh, uh, Richard Landgraf's book, which you can get on Amazon. It's, it's uh, a pretty good, uh, it's self-published, but it's a pretty good uh, book about his time working at the Long Beach Naval Shipyard, where he worked on uh, New Jersey and Missouri. I've only read a couple of chapters that specifically relate to the Iowa-class battleships, and he doesn't specifically say what happened to the guns, uh, but potentially in other parts of the book, uh, he, he might say what happens to those sorts of things when they're removed. I'm not sure. The real reason for this is uh, there is one piece of evidence out there that gives me an idea of what probably happened to the gun. So that's my best guess. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. First, Iowa-class battleships were originally designed with 10 twin mounts of 5-inch uh, 38 dual-purpose guns. They carried these all the way up until the 1980s. In 1982, when New Jersey is reactivated for service at the end of the Cold War, uh, this is the big one where they put in all the cruise missiles, they decide they have to remove four of the mounts. The two that are on the 01 level are retained. The forwardmost one on the 02 level is retained, but the two aftermost ones on the 02 level are deleted. The very aft set of mounts is deleted so that a deck can be built over that area, and that is where the after Tomahawk cruise missiles are installed. The midship mounts uh, really could have probably stayed. The type of uh, boat winch that was added really obscures their uh, arc of fire, as does the deck for the uh, midships mount. So part of it might have been the restricted arcs of fire. Uh, th the main reason is the weight. They had to save weight. The, they removed all the World War II era anti-aircraft guns. They removed a lot of crew billets, which has a ton of associated weight with it in food stores and uniforms and the personnel themselves and other things. Uh, they removed a lot of electronics and other things. And they still had these thoroughbred battleships weighted down beyond the maximum that they were designed to do. Uh, so they had to find a couple hundred other tons to remove, and a couple of these five-inch mounts were the way to go. Battleship five-inch mounts are very different from the destroyer five-inch mounts. Not so much on their interior setup, but the battleship mounts have splinter protection, and the destroyer mounts uh, cover is mainly just to protect all the material inside from water. Uh, it is really thin, uh, metal plating on a destroyer. On a battleship, it's two and a half inch STS plate. So their mounts are heavier um, and armored like the rest of the ship, which means you can't just take one of these mounts and put it back in the inventory somewhere. The destroyers that were frammed, the last of the World War II era destroyers in service, weren't gonna need these guns as replacements if something happened to theirs. They didn't need to go back in the inventory. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's possible carriers and some of the cruisers might have had the same style of armored mounts, uh, or they might have had the destroyer kind. I'm, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head. But by the 1980s, these were either out of service or had had their uh, five-inch guns removed. So these did not need to go back into the inventory. The Barrels and some of the other parts, in theory, are uh, still usable and interchangeable with the other mount, but the, the bulk of it wasn't. And I have to imagine that in the 1980s, we just had a surplus of those 5-inch 38 barrels that we didn't know what to do with, from ships that had been decommissioned, scrapped, uh, or 
uh, gun mounts that had been removed from these destroyers during various modernizations and framings and things like that. So, what happened to the guns that were here? What evidence do I have to say that uh, what I believe happened happened? First off, I'd almost guarantee you they were scrapped. Because of what I just said, I doubt they went back into the inventory. Why do I think they were scrapped? What precedent is there for that? Look at this picture of Kentucky. This is 1959, when the incomplete Iowa-class battleship Kentucky is being towed from Norfolk to Baltimore to be scrapped. The ship is only completed up to second deck, which means they still had one more deck of hull to build. She had to be launched ahead of schedule to free up the dry dock she was being built in for Missouri when Missouri ran aground. So even though she wasn't completed in her hull, they launched her and put her in the water and they kept her there for almost two decades, wondering, hey, should we finish this as a missile battleship? Should we reuse it as a uh, oiler? Should... There, there were a ton of different proposals put forward for Kentucky's incomplete hull. And in 1959, they decided, Nah, let's scrap her. The problem is, big Navy ships like this are covered in hazardous material that have to be abated. So the scrap value of the ships, in many cases, ends up being less than the uh, cost of doing all that abatement in the process of scrapping it. So a lot of companies uh, do it as a courtesy to the Navy to get other more lucrative contracts. Think about the recent scrappings of uh, Kitty Hawk and Kennedy. As of today, just an update on that, uh, which is, uh, what, June 8th, 2022, Kitty Hawk has uh, made it to Brownsville, Texas, and uh, by now they've probably started the scrapping process. Kennedy is still over at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, but now that Kitty Hawk's tow is complete, Kennedy will probably leave any moment now. Um, those ships notoriously are sold for, what was it, a penny or a dollar each. So just showing you that there is no value in these ships uh, went through the scrapping and whatnot. There's not like a huge competitive bid system to uh, make money off of them. So in order to increase the scrap value of Kentucky, it seems like all of the various pieces and parts of Kentucky that had been made were put on the deck along with the ship. Why are these systems already made if the ship hadn't been completed to the O1 level where the five inch guns get installed? Because of the armor plate on things like the gun mounts, those are long lead items. Also gun barrels are a long lead item. It, it takes almost as long to make one of those as it takes to make the ship. So you start that process at the same time you authorize the ship. You don't wait until it's close to the installation to start building a five inch gun mount. So they had these extra gun mounts around. And if you look at this picture, you can count all 10 of them just stacked up on the deck. That's not all that's on the deck. Let's, let's take this opportunity to talk about this cool picture. A picture's worth a thousand words. If you look at the extreme fantail, you'll see there's all sorts of chocks and other tie down points for ropes installed, as well as the railing. So even though this ship is only completed to second deck, um, they, they still install this stuff for moving the ship around the, the shipyard, it seems, and for uh, safety of the workers on board. So all this would have had to be cut off, a new deck put on, and then reinstalled around the main deck, assuming the ship had been completed. That's interesting to me that uh, they, had, they went through this trouble. And it looks like the same sort of stuff that's on other Iowa-class battleships. It's not just some, well, just weld this thing down there. Uh, moving on, you can see the five-inch gun mounts. And you can see some short cylindrical pieces, which are the five-inch gun barrels. So both the barrels and the mounts are being scrapped, even though the barrels can be used on other ships. And this is in 1959, when the guns are still in heavy use in the inventory not 82 when they're being phased out. Also, you can see some longer pieces of pipe and some big round structures there. It is probable that these are part of the 16-inch gun turrets. 
Uh, the, the big round pieces are probably part of the rotating structure or the bases of them. And then the, the longer pieces of pipes could well be the 16 inch barrels. We know that spare barrels from Montana's and later Iowa's were kept in the inventory to swap out with the Iowa barrels as they needed to be relined. So I'm not sure if uh, they had enough of them that they were able to send some of these to the scrappers to give them a little bit extra money to take the job, or if what looks like gun barrels could be, say, the uh, sections of the armor plating for the uh, various director tubes, which again, armor plating, long lead item. So the, the wiring trunks for the main battery directors that go all the way up the superstructure, that could be them. Could also be the propeller shaft which comes in sections that would then be inserted. And you don't tend to install those until after the ship is already completed and launched, which may or may not have been done on Kentucky. Um, probably because she was incomplete, even though she was launched, they were not installed. The idea being she would be returned to dry dock uh, to be completed, and that's when they would be on there. So maybe those are propeller shafts. Uh, they're, they're probably 16-inch gun barrels, but could be other things. I suspect, but don't know for sure, that the Navy only kept an extra 36 barrels around, which is one spare for each Iowa barrel, uh, and didn't keep all of the 16-inch barrels they had saved. So some of them might have been with Kentucky to be installed had the ship been finished and then just sent to the scrappers. You'll also notice that the 16-inch uh, gun houses have a roof over them. That's a, that's a big four or five story pit in the ship. So oftentimes under construction, there will be a coned over roof there. Uh, and the final cool thing you can see in this picture, all the way at the bow at the far end, you can see that there is a, a fairly big, looks rectangular in the picture, structure sitting crossways on the deck. That is hold level of the hull. When her bow was cut off to be installed on Wisconsin after Wisconsin rammed Eaton in the uh, mid 50s, they only had to cut out part of Wisconsin's bow, the, the part that was broken by the uh, collision. The part on top, which was undamaged, was retained, the, the main deck level, because Wisconsin, or excuse me, because Kentucky hadn't completed the main deck. There was nothing there to use. Also, the lowest level was perfectly intact because the destroyer doesn't go that low in the hall. So they left the lowest part there on Kentucky for if they completed the ship when they reconstructed her. Just a little bit of cost savings. And again, they didn't need it when the ship was being scrapped, so they just craned it on the ship and sent it to Baltimore uh, to the scrapper along with the rest of the vessel. Just to wrap up, my guess, and I'm not 100% sure of this, not even 100% sure where to find documentation that would say uh, what happened to these guns. My guess to the question I get entirely too often about what happened to the missing four guns on each of the Iowa class battleships is that they were scrapped when the ships were decommissioned. Uh, if you have a better idea, know somewhere you could look for the documentation or uh, know without I doubt what happened to these guns. There's one at your local VFW hall sitting on the lawn. Let me know. Uh, hit the comment section down below. If you have other questions you'd like to see addressed in future videos, also drop them in the comment section down below. Or head on over to my Facebook page linked down below. Uh, you're, you're much more likely to get a quick response from me there because we get a heck of a lot less comments than we do on the YouTube videos. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting us uh, by donating. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing this video so more people find out about the channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.